it certainly works in the nick. <laughs> but uh, the, uh, uh, when the opportunity arose, I, I, I uh, wasn't good enough. I, I couldn't project my voice because uh, one of the great heroes in my life was Jack Palance. And I think, wow, that's wonderful, because everybody was still saying, Stony number one, and coming on the road, And I thought that was wonderful, or Jimmy Dean, or Marlon Brando. Wonderful characters. Real mumblers. Yeah, so I, so I started to mumble, and it was no good for, for theatre. So I've been offered a lot of theatre since, usually in musicals, having made Tommy. <laughs> uh, I can't sing or add up or spell, I can't do anything, so they've given up the idea of theatre. So they allow me to mumble. You like people in pubs. Do you like your fellow actors as a breed? No. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I mean, it's, I get on very well with them. And when we work, they're lovely. And I wouldn't be as effusive as Sir Richard and burst into tears every time I saw them. <laughs> 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 but yeah, they're great. And then I say goodbye, and I never actually say goodbye. I sometimes just walk out of the studio without saying a word. Because you're going to meet again on another set somewhere. I don't go out of my way, certainly go out of my way to be rude to them. Unless... <laughs> unless they got a different shape to me. <laughs> but uh, that was in the old days. No, I, I don't mix with actors. I mean, there are people that love that kind of thing, and there are the people like me who prefer the company of artisans. I mean, Peter the Great did, didn't he? He was known as Peter the Carpenter when he came over here to learn to build his navy, the Russian navy. And he was known as Peter the Carpenter. And when it came abroad that he was, uh, he was in London, people used to throw pips at him. I do love you two. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, don't, I, don't, I didn't go to RADA. I don't have this back, background that they have. It's interesting how your looks determine your career. Yours, of course, is, is violence, isn't it, Oliver? <laughs> and you were stuck with the ever youthful label. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> As he said, crying most of the time. <laughs> now, you, you do tend to wear your heart on your sleeve. Do you mind people remarking on that all the time? No, not at all. Right. What about spitting image? Do you like that? Uh, that song makes me laugh very much. Because they were talking to Roy Hattersley about him spitting cake everywhere and he eats all the time the other day. And you're always on it. I think you're wonderful. Yeah. On spitting image? Yeah. 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 But, I don't mind. Actors, actors have to have their emotions available. I mean, that's a part of our performance. And uh, I am an emotional person. Uh, my kids make me cry sometimes when I see somebody being very brave or um, self-effacing or I, I find it moving. I don't find it embarrassing that I cry sometimes, but I, I don't cry anything like as much as I appear to on Spitting Image. <laughs> <laughs> a role you're still playing in real life that people say would not last is, is of husband. Yeah. That's good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, for the last time. Yes, yes. It's not a role I would uh, want to play again. I'm uh, deeply... Uh, Deeply fond of my wife. Excellent. And as we're talking about the <coughs> softer side, you, you've adopted a dog. Oh. <laughs> How do you know about him? I was told. Yeah, I was playing a general in Italy, and the Italians love their ham rolls, or the prosciutto ham they put in it. And it's I nothing to do with dogs, is it? <laughs> well, eventually, <laughs> oh, because, because they used to eat the ham and throw the, the bread rolls on the floor. And uh, before I could get to them, being a starving actor, <laughs> <laughs> before I could get to them, we were both diving, and this dog snatched it away. And the star, one of the stars of this movie, was a dog. Uh, and so he was going around, he had shampoos and medals all over him, and people used to brush and comb him. And I suddenly saw this <laughs> thing like that, covered in all sorts of things that that dogs are covered in. <laughs> and, no, it didn't have any. Oh, God. No, all sorts yeah. of, no, his hair was dropping out, and he was very tucked up, and he was in bad order. 
So I put him in my caravan. An Italian came in and said, eh, bah, bah, Maybe some Italians watching, so I won't say what they said. But <laughs> what they were explaining to me was that the caravan was simply on hire, and the next day we were going to go inside the studio, and the caravan will be hired out, and this dog had fleas, and he probably had other things, and so would I get him out into the rain again? So I said to him, I looked at my wife, my wife looked at me, and I said, do you want to swap? <laughs> <laughs> and so we sent him off to an Italian hospital, and now he's uh, in, a, in a home in uh, Guernsey until July the 4th, when he's going to come over to... No, he's not in Guernsey, he's in Surrey. Then he comes over to Guernsey, and uh, I hope doesn't chase the cattle, and I hope he doesn't... Uh... Well, it's lovely to hear this story. I'm going to cry. Yes. <laughs> 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 it's now time to go home, gents. Um, don't forget, I must remind our viewers, if you want to ring up, the inner London code changes to 071 after midnight. Told you that. Many thanks. Good to see you again, Oliver Reed. <laughs> Sir Richard Attenborough. And John Ford. Thanks for your company. I'll be back next Saturday, but Sir Richard and I are off across London to a rather special party with somebody we'll be able to see later tonight. See you soon. <laughs>